Crime Church, Mama Ta'a's story, Chapter 9, A Ton of Courage. In the corrugated iron fence, tall as a house, painted black, a small square appears. It's a white man with flames on his throat and devil horns tattooed over his ears. He strokes his wiry goatee, thinking, then unlatches some bolt and pulls open a door-sized entrance in the fence. It's only just wide enough to allow my left crutch, my bottom and my right crutch inside, plus my handbag, Hilde Paladino. <sighs> All I carry with me is the $19 handbag from Kmart. I discarded the Hilde Paladino in the Save Mark clothing bin yesterday. It is a tainted gift. Cursed. The Devil Man, whose gold crucifix swings as he steps aside to hold the door open, closes it firmly behind me and positions himself with tough, folded arms. I have banged the metal. I have demanded to be let in to see their leader. Mama is angry and tired and she's had enough. You're on crutches, he says. Fuck happened to your head, you're right. You tell me, son. You tell me. Fuck's that supposed to mean? We don't beat up bitches. Devil man sticks his little fingers in his lips and whistles at a friend. The friend comes jogging over, his huge red and black hoodie bouncing. It has the numbers 88 up and down it. She wants to meet the vape, he tells his friend. He looks at me like I'm an insane person. Only in the slums of Nukwalofa have I seen something as primitive as this Garden City Narc Beaters slum. Hovel would be a nice word for it. Barrels everywhere. Mountains of stacked pallets with ladders leading to pool umbrellas on the top. Little lookout towers watching Addington one way, sprayed in another. Sockburn, Rickerton, shiny coils of razor wire. There is a brick wall too with glass stuck in the top with blobs of cement. There is a dumpster full of limbs of wood with nails sticking out of each wooden club. Several cars face a single fortified gate as if ready to charge out and there are Harley Davidson motorcycles, more than 10 of them. The compound is so full of, I don't know what to call it, munitions? Detritus? The place is half dump, half gold mine with car engines, piles of tyres, boxes of beer bottles and smouldering drums everywhere. Arms folded, standing in front of a half burned smelly pirate flag is this president man they call Doggo. Dwayne Wade Adams, he must be, the one named in the Operation Underdog Dossier as the acting president of what used to be the Epitaph Writers, now known as the Last Laugh MC. The dossier I read all night, read four times, weeping at the cruel allegations, shocked at the creeps who should know better, <laughs> dragging down my baby boy. The dossier told this, me, this motorcycle club... <laughs> is prohibited under its own rules from becoming part of the Headhunters Corps without having its executive fully in support. Yes, the club's president, someone Brian or Blaine or Blake must be convinced to vote in favour of the patch over unless that president is no longer alive. All this in the dossier I pull out of my bag, my Donatella Versace bag I used to have. It's like a paper bomb. The dossier is my olive branch, my plea, my appeal. It has to save my life, and Mr. Adams's life, and the life of my boy. I lift one arm. Off my crutch, I proffer the document. It has taken a ton of courage to enter here, with my head pounding and my bladder close to exploding, but I'm armoured with hurt. My own chongi, going behind my back for years, lying to his mama, using our good family name for mischief. So you're a long way from home, miss. The biker begins. Some of his friends, two scrawny, lanky whites and a fat, bald Mari guy with huge breasts, are sitting on their motorcycles watching us. There is a pool table with what must be 200 beer bottles on it. Everyone looks exhausted and everyone stinks. I want to take these boys to Mama's place and give them a jolly good bath. Mr. Adams... I begin, I'm begging you, it's doggo, he says without looking up. No court names in here. He's flipping through the dossier, his lips peeling back in a disgusted snarl. How in God's green earth did you get this? 
Togo pulls a wrench from his back pocket, turns toward the bald-breasted boy and throws the wrench at his friend's face. The fat boy absorbs the blow with his stomach, picks up the wrench and begins admiring it. How come you didn't source me one of these here manuals, you fat fuck? Sorry, Veep. Underdog, they're calling it, eh? Is that right? (laughs) Doggo's teeth emerge as he chuckles. He finally takes a long, steady look at Mama, then shakes his head. Come, boardroom. He has to shove nearly 20 buckets of paint aside before he can kick in a secret metal door. The room reeks of mould and the ceiling is half black with the stuff. There's a small mountain of headhunters patches on the table with loose new threads hanging out of them as if they've been stitched in a hurry. On each patch is a flaming skull with horns. My thighs tremble. Kettle, 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 let's see, let's see, where's the fucking kettle? Doggo finds a kettle under the sink, plugs it in and searches the cupboards. He realises he's left the dossier lying near me, snatches it back. Tea bags, tea bags, tea bags. The kettle whistles as it boils. Doggo insists I take a seat at the table, although he's too busy thumbing through the dossier to sit. Doggo insists I take a seat at the table, although he's too busy thumbing through the dossier to sit down himself. His eyebrows lurch and wriggle as paragraphs surprise him. I try to move the gang patches so there is room for me to put my bag down. Don't touch those, he barks. Sorry, lady, but... God damn, woman, way to muck up a man's day. Damn, I should have never let you in. Why the heck are you coming in here? Because I am asking you. My voice drops away. My throat is dry. Doggo slides a cup of tea at Mama, and I sip it and feel fire on my tongue. Because I'm asking you, please don't kill my son. Doggo paces from the wall to the door again. He is old, silver head, but sharp, throbbing with energy. This doggo man, he holds up a finger like a sword as he paces the small room. First up, I'm not making any promises, but maybe you can clarify things a bit. Tell me, who's your son? Chong Emmanuel Assam. Chong, Chong. He's clicking his fingers. Oh, the Chong! What, that huge nigga with the death wish? You're Chong's mummy. Holy fucking shit! He shakes my hand profusely, then forces a kiss on me. Sorry I didn't say hi properly before. I snatched my flesh away from his lips. My son, you mutilated him. He looks surprised. Not yet, I haven't, unless there's something you want to tell me. I bang my fist on the table and the tassels on the patches shiver. Neither of us can think of a way to move the conversation forward. Doggo opens a bottle of milk, sniffs it, sneers at it, pulls it down the sink and decides to take his tea black. Got his arm busted, okay, I confess. Grapevine told me that's what's up. Got a wee stiffy when I heard that, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm not sorry, ma'am. I'm straight up not fucking sorry in the least. Prick at it coming. Do you know how many people have been hurt by that cunt's fucking arm over the years? Didn't he punch out his own dad when he was in nappies or something? That's what I heard. He sucks his top lip into his bottom lip. Anyway, miss, wasn't the last laugh that fucked up his arm. Can't take credit for that. Shit, as far as I know, it wasn't even the 88s. He's gone over to them, doing a bit of work. Ugh, scaring little boys for using their trademark, apparently. Look, the man's a mercenary. He's bound to have a hundred enemies out there. I do not care how tough this Mr. Doggo is. I get up, I prod him with my crutch, and herd him into a corner. I want my sonny safe. I want you to promise he'll be left alone. He started this. I ordered that little shithead to go and take care of Blakeo and... Oh, damn it, bitch. Your son is a full-grown man. He's fair game. We're panting. We sip our tea angrily. Then my phone is ringing. I stare at my phone until eight rings have passed. Doggo brings a roll of toilet paper from some dusty corner and urges me to try my face. Look. Listen real close. Maybe your little bubba doesn't share all the shenanigans he gets up to in a day. You ever considered that? Right? The man was standing over some unhinged motherfucking skinners. They could have done it. Plus, Chong's subcontracted some mad bastard to hit out my boys. That crazy cunt could have done it. Uh, Jade the prick's called. Jade Connery or something. Jade slag heap slashy. Anyway, he's fucking gone and abducted me, hasn't he? And Chong's chucked him to the curb, literally knocked out his dikey fucking sister. So now our Jade Connery friend's doing bodyguarding for that Adolf Hitler wannabe. Kyle Chadwick, you know, the one that calls himself a youth worker specialising in Caucasian cultural values. Look, upshot of it all, miss. 
It's a goddamn soap opera around here. You want to steer clear. Nice to meet you. Please fuck off permanent. I position my crutches and get ready to walk out. I came for a name. And you are leaving with two, lady. Jade Slattery. <laughs>